In this video, we're going to learn to use the Bezier Curve tool to create clean base sprites for game characters. This is what I use to create individual body parts for the characters I'm then going to animate in a game engine like Godot. You can find the tool in the toolbox. It has a curve with two handles and there's an analogous tool that you can use to create selections that works the same way. The only difference is it will produce a selection. You can use that tool to draw geometric shapes really precisely and to draw both curves and straight lines. You can then use it to create a stroke using the active brush or if you go to the tool options docker that's generally at the bottom right of your interface you can modify the option to fill the shape but I tend to work just with the brush stroke. Note that this tool also works with vector layers so you can trace vector shapes with it but we'll look at that in another video. With the tool options back in the bottom right, I'm going to set the fill to not fill so that I'm only going to draw with the brush. Right now, the brush I'm using has a fixed width. So it's something I use in general to create precise shapes. So I want to draw a little bill bouquet on the character here. And instead of using the brush, I could do that and paint with the freehand brush tool we can create precise curves with the Bezier Curve tool. So it's especially useful when you have a sketch and you want to draw precisely on top of it. So I'm just going to have a rope that's going to do an S-curve here. Now here's how it works. So you select the Bezier Curve tool and you're going to click to place your first point. Then you can click and drag anywhere to create a curve. So when you drag, you're going to extend the tangent to the point that you are drawing. And this is going to round out the curve perpendicular, in a sense, to that tangent. Okay, it's going to get the curve to slowly bend towards the tangent as it gets closer to the point that you just added. And you can just click without using a click and drag to create sharp lines like this. Once you are done creating your line, if you just want a stroke, you can press enter. All right, so you can use that to draw a curve. You can also create shapes that are closed. So for that, you just want to get back to the starting point and click to close the shape. It will automatically draw the shape and you can undo adding any point that you just added. So I'm going to increase the size of my brush with the bracket key and click and drag here to create the shape. Mm, I'm not satisfied with that point, so I'm going to right click and Krita is going to undo the last vertex I just added. So now let's create some kind of S curve like that. I'm not satisfied with this either. So I'm going to create my S curve the other way around like that and say this is roughly what I want. I'm going to click and then press enter to validate my stroke. So once you have that base stroke, you can always use the slash key to toggle the preserve alpha mode. You can see that in the top of the interface in the toolbar. Then select the freehand brush tool with B. I'm going to pick a brush with which I can paint and change the color of my rope here. So <clears throat> I select the rope layer. I've remapped a filling with the foreground color to control F as I can use it with my left hand, but by default you have to use shift backspace. I'm going to select a different color, so shift A to bring the color selector pop up and paint a little bit the shadow and the area at the top. So if you're looking for that brush, it's part of our GQuest uh, Krita brush set. And I use this one a lot for game characters. With the base rope in place, I can select the circle drawing tool. So it's aligned with the other drawing tools as always. And I'm going to select the same brush I had. Make sure that Preserve Alpha is off. Add a new layer and I'll draw the circle for the build bouquet on that. So I typically draw outlines and fill them with the fill tool, but you can directly use the fill option 
on any of the shape drawing tools. The thing is, because the options in the tool options are per tool and not common to all the shape drawing tools, I prefer to have them all on outline, which is the mode I use the most, drawing with the brush. And I don't want to have to go back and change them every time to take my mouse cursor to the tool options. So that's why I use F and click instead of making that change every time. And by using these tools, you can really save a lot of time when you create game sprites. In the Godot Open RPG, I'm looking to create some characters now for the map. So we have the characters for the combat system already in place. And now the map is just a template. As you see, I need to build the, the tile set. But first, I wanted to design the characters. So I started doing that in a separate document. And now we're going to see how you can create a mask for every body part to create an animatable cutout character with clean shapes. So first, I'm going to grab the Bezier Curve tool or the Curve tool. And I'm going to go up uh, roughly where the head is supposed to be, so under the two layers of hair here. I'm going to pick a color from Divad's preset that works well for the face, and I'm going to start tracing. So here's how I place the points uh, on the curves to create the contour that I want. I look for places where you have some turn, a little bit of roundness, and I'll create a vertex and click and drag at that point. Then the chin area is mostly flat. I just want to add a point under the chin and pull a little bit to give it a bit of roundness so I don't get a corner point. And then do the same on the cheek on the other side. So where there's a turn, I'm going to pull the handle, click and drag to create that rounded corner. And then go back up here and I will just click to create a point. So now we have two corner points on either sides of the head. I do want to fill the skull a little bit because there's an opening in the character's hair. So I'm going to go up there around the symmetry point of the skull and click and drag to create a really round skull. So because I'm using a screen tablet, it's not easy to see exactly where to release the mouse cursor. I have to move my hand around a little bit. But to wrap this up, I'm going to click and drag on the last point. So this last handle, because this first point was a corner point, is only going to affect the portion that is before the last point. It's not going to affect the start of our curve here. And I can release to trace with my brush. So I use the brush here so that I can manually fill the area, depending on the brush that you are using. Basically here, it's just a brush to create contours, but sometimes you might want to use a specific brush. So I always have my shape drawing tool set to creating an outline with the brush. And with that, I have the base for my character's head. So from there, I can press the slash key to toggle preserve alpha on. Then to shade it, I'm going to hide the other layers. I can anytime right click, select one of my shading brushes. So typically I'll use the flat one here that I really like. Pick a different color and start painting inside of it. It will respect the character's face shape. This is a real quick tip, but I wanted to show you, you can use these tools to draw precise shapes and sometimes save time compared to using the brush and messing up your strokes multiple times. If you're interested in seeing more techniques, please tell us in the comments below. But that said, be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.